Welcome back. In the last video, we set up enhanced input for a basic pawn, and we got a single input action capable of storing Boolean data, and we saw how we could link that up to our pawn, both in Blueprint and C++. That's a very basic example, and in this video, we're going to find out how we can move this pawn forward and backward. Now, this particular pawn is quite basic. It doesn't have a camera or a spring arm. It just has a capsule and a mesh. I've also added a floating pawn movement component so that it at least has a movement component and can handle movement input. And if I go to Edit and Project Settings and I go to Input, we see that this project has some axis mappings. It has Move Forward, and I've linked the W and S keys to it. This is the old way to do it. The enhanced input system now uses input actions rather than these axis mappings. So we're going to convert this to using enhanced input. Now, being a 5.1 project, enhanced input is already included. As you can see down in the default classes, we have enhanced player input and enhanced input component. And if you watched the previous two videos, you know that these are the new enhanced versions of these default classes that handle input. Now, in the last video, we had a single key, the W key, linked to move forward, and all we did was print a UE log to the screen, and we saw how to convert the project to use enhanced input to do that. In this video, we're taking it up a notch in complexity. My move forward axis mapping has W and S, and as you can see, the scale for S is set to negative one, and if I press play, I'm possessing the pawn. You can't see it because I don't have any camera offset, but if I click in the viewport, I can move forward and backward because I'm adding movement input to my pawn. Now here's the C++ code to make that work. I have a move forward function, and as this is set up to use the old input system, this callback takes a float value, and instead of player input component, we used bind axis, to bind it to the move forward axis mapping. And all that move forward does is checks to see if the controller is a valid pointer and that the value is not zero. And then we get the actor's forward vector and we add movement input in the forward direction for the bird. So this is super basic. And we're gonna get into more complicated examples in the next videos, but we're taking this up one step in complexity by converting this functionality to use the enhanced input system. Now, we saw in the last video that to use the modules in C++ that contain enhanced input classes and functions, we had to go to our build file and add enhanced input to our public dependency module names. So we're gonna do that here. And if you've followed along in the last video, you already did this. So we need enhanced input here. So I can save that and I can generate Visual Studio project files so that we can build with the enhanced input module. So I'm gonna close out, close the editor, and we'll delete saved intermediate and binaries before generating Visual Studio project files. Then we can open our U project, and we can click on yes to rebuild the modules, and our project will open up. And now we get that minimal default map with the new checkered floor. Now, in the last video, we had an input folder, and we created an input action called IA move. And if we double click that, we see that its value type is bool. And we also created an input mapping context called IMC bird context. And we added IA move to it, linking up the W key. And we don't have any triggers or modifiers. And we then set up our C++ project to link this to the local player through the enhanced input local player subsystem. Well, now we want to use a different value type for move. We don't just want true or false. We'd like a float value. So we could use axis 1D float if we change it to that. Now our input action is capable of storing float data. So if we press the W key, we'll get a one. If we don't press the W key, the value will be zero but we'd like to be able to press the S key to go backward. So to do that, we can add a new key to the IA move input action here in our input mapping context. We can click on plus and we can click the keyboard icon and press S. And now S will also trigger IA move. 
But now that this IA move stores a single float value, we'd like to modify our usage of the S key. We'd like it to be negative. And one of the built-in modifiers is the negate modifier. If we click plus to add a modifier, we can click the dropdown and select negate. Now expanding this, we see that negate will negate X, Y, and Z. Even though we're not using a three-dimensional vector, we can leave these all checked to ensure that our float value will be negated. So now if we press the S key, thanks to our negate modifier, we'll get a negative one instead of a positive one. And we'd like to see how to use that value for a callback function that we'd like to bind to this input action. So back in our project, here's my pawn, it's called a bird. We saw in the last video that we needed to create a variable of type input mapping context, which means we needed to forward declare it up at the top. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we needed an input action variable. So we forward declared the input action class at the top here. So we have these now. And if we wanted to make a callback that we could bind to an input action, we needed to include the header file for input action value. This is a struct that our callback will receive and it will contain the value associated with a given input action. And so we were then able to create our variables. We had a U input mapping context, which we called bird mapping context. And we made this a U property with edit anywhere so we could set it in the details panel. I went ahead and made it blueprint read only and gave it the category of input. And we also added a variable of type U input action called move action. And we gave it the same U property so that we could set that from the blueprint as well. And we saw that we needed to link up our input mapping context to our local player through the enhanced input local player subsystem. And we did that in begin play. So here in begin play, we used an if statement declaring a local variable in the scope of that if statement of type player controller, casting the controller. We actually used get controller, the getter, and cast it to an A player controller and stored that in our local player controller variable. And from there, we used the same trick declaring a new local variable inside of an if statement like this called subsystem of this type enhanced input local player subsystem and we initialized it using the static function get subsystem specifying the enhanced input local player subsystem type and this function requires a u local player which we got from the player controller and we saw that to use this enhanced input local player subsystem type we had to add an include in fact we needed a few includes here to use the classes we were going to need we needed component slash input component we'll be using that in setup player input component we needed enhanced input component and enhanced input subsystems enhanced input subsystems is where this enhanced input local player subsystem type is defined. So inside this inner if statement, we now have our enhanced input local player subsystem in this local variable. And we saw that we could add our bird mapping context using this subsystem pointer. So we're gonna take that, call add mapping context, and this requires an input mapping context. We have our bird mapping context, right? and a priority, we can give it the priority zero for now. So we saw that in order to add a mapping context and associate it with a given player controller or local player to be exact here in C++, we had to do this. Now we also created a function callback called move and we wanted to bind that to our input action. So what we did was we created a void function called move, which took an input of type const reference to f input action value. And we saw that in order to use this struct type, we had to include the header where it's defined. And we did that up here at the top. And we defined this function. And all we did was get the Boolean value from it using the value calling dot get specifying bool. But now our value is going to be a float. So 
we're going to be changing that to float. So we can store this in a const float, and we can call this direction value. We'll just treat it like a direction, as in positive 1 is forward and negative 1 is backward. So in my new move forward function, using the old input system, we have this move forward, where we get the forward vector and call add movement input. This passes the forward vector on to the movement component, in our case, a floating pawn movement component, and scales it by a value. Well, now we can use this code in our new move function. So I'm gonna copy and paste it there. The only difference is we now have direction value. We had to get it from our f input action value input parameter called value. So we can replace this here and check to see if that is not equal to zero. And when we call add movement input, we now can pass in direction value, our local float here that we got by calling get on our f input action value. Now, there was one last piece of the puzzle, and that was how we set up our axis mapping in the old way now needs to change. We don't want to use bind axis anymore. Instead, we had to cast our player input component to an enhanced input component. And we use cast checked. That way we'll get a nice crash if this cast fails. And once inside of this, we were then able to bind the function using bind action here. And we specified our move action as the action we're binding to. We used the e trigger event triggered enum constant so that our function will be called when this action is triggered. Our user object for this is this, the bird we're in. And we bound our new a bird move function using the address of operator and the fully qualified function name. So this is all review. That's why I'm pasting it in and not typing it out. We did this all in the last video. The only difference now though, is our move function behaves a little differently. Where we got a Boolean before, now we're getting a float. And we can now call get actor forward vector to get the forward direction. And we can call add movement input now, passing in the direction and the value associated with our input action. So now we're actually moving our pawn in our function callback. And this function is now linked to an input action. So now we're using the new enhanced input system. And because this line is commented out, we're no longer using the old way. In fact, I can just delete it. So the axis mapping called move forward in the project settings is now not even being used. And because our IMC bird context has W and S, W doesn't have any modifiers or triggers, but S does have a modifier. It's using the negate modifier. So that means that value that we're getting here in our move function from the F input action value is going to be negative if we're pressing the S key. And then we should see our pawn move backwards as we're calling add movement input and scaling it by that direction value. So we can go ahead and close out of the editor. I'm gonna save everything. And I'm going to compile and launch the editor. So we have a successful compile. So launching our project now, we can load up our project and we can drag in our bird pawn here. And we know that it has its auto possess player set to player zero. So we'll possess it by default. And in order to have a valid input mapping context and input action, which to remind you are these two variables here, we made them edit anywhere. We do want to make sure that we set these in the blueprint. So bird mapping context and move action should be set here for this to work. So now if I go ahead and press play and click in the viewport, I can press W and I move forward. I can press S and I'm moving backward. And again, we can't see the bird, but we are possessing it. If I hold shift F1 and detach from the bird pawn, I see that it's there. So I'm going to go ahead and repossess and click in the viewport. Now, I can use tilde and type show debug enhanced input. And here are the debug messages. And we can now see that our IA move is triggered when we press W or S. And right next to the green text where it says triggered, 
we have a negative one or a positive one, depending on whether we're pressing W or S. So we've now used an input action capable of storing input data in the form of a float. Now, that's still pretty much just as basic as a Boolean. In fact, we could have used a Boolean and performed some check here in C++, for example. In our move function, we could have just got that Boolean, and if it was true, we could have moved forward, and if it was false, we could have moved backward. So it's not that big of a jump in complexity, but we now see that we can get different types of values from our F input action value. So in the next video, we're going to learn how to step this up just a little bit more in complexity by changing our value type to an axis 2D. And we'll be creating a new input action to handle looking around. So we'll do this for a pawn that has a camera and a spring arm. And we'll move our mouse and look around in the world by using a new input action with an axis 2D value type. So we'll do that next. So excellent job, and I'll see you in the next video.